capital gains versus cash flow. Who would win in a fight? That's today's episode. Let's dive into it. Here we are at our very first rental property. Hey everyone, when you're done watching today's episode, you're gonna know the difference between capital gains and cash flow, and actually who is better for you at the bottom line, your tax benefits at the end of the year. I'm Clayton Morris. I'm Natalie Morris. And this is the show where we help you build financial intelligence, become a smarter investor, you know, investing for cash flow, we hope. Exactly, that's right. So we're gonna to talk today about the different types of income that you could be earning as a real estate investor and which one is preferable. Um, I kind of think of this as like, one is like a quick fix, like a box of donuts, right? And one is like eating broccoli on a regular basis. So hopefully you're the kind of person that prefers the broccoli instead of the donuts. So what you're saying <laughs> is that it's slow and bland versus... My broccoli's delicious, excuse me. Broccoli she can should. be delicious. She does make a good broccoli. She makes it, puts a I little ol it. olive oil, puts it in the uh, in the oven, and then so she coats it in then cheese too, like in Parmesan cheese. Mm -hmm, it's delicious. So, so you can okay, so, but we're talking about something that's good for you in the long term, right? Mm -hmm versus something you can gobble up quickly and gives you a quick fix, right? So we're gonna talk about the differences in money. So a lot of times when you tell people like out at the store, you say, oh, I'm a real estate investor and they go, oh, like flips. I don't know why people say that. Like that's what's popular because people think that when you buy something for cheap, you put some money into it, you sell it for a lot, that that's how people build wealth. Well, I hate to break it to you, it's really not. Some people make it their business to make money that way. Those people have a system about it. But for someone like Clayton and I, who are not general contractors, we want to buy real estate and hold it for income, right? Right, right. So, and there's this, I, I don't know, say misnomer about real estate investing. If someone says, yeah, I flip, I flip houses. Well, that's not a real estate investor. That's a transactional business. That's a paycheck, right? Because you're only as good as your most recent flip. Then you have to go out and find another deal to flip. Otherwise, you don't have a salary coming in. Right. It's a paycheck. It's not a long-term investment strategy. Yeah. Right? You know, I was at the hair salon the other day, and they had that flip show on where the girl wears all that makeup to her construction sites. Flip or flop? Flip or flop. That's it. And, you know, at the end, they give you the bottom line. Like, we bought it for this with holding costs and closing costs, and then we, you know, sold it for this and there'll be a profit there sure but his closing line is always time to find another house to flip because right. it's not like oh good he made two hundred thousand dollars now he's done with life right, right. he can live on that two hundred thousand dollars for a certain amount of time but he will pay capital gains on that so begs the question what is capital gains? Right. So what is exactly capital gains? So when he sells, he flips that house and he's holding it for a short amount of time. He's going to pay. That's why you always hear flippers who like we, we, we had a guy in our old neighborhood who would buy a house. He would fix it up and live in it for two years because the federal government for capital gains in taxes him way lower if he held it for two years. But most flippers, they get in and they get out. They're right. holding it for less than a year. And that's why the capital gains percentage numbers are so high. Okay. So capital gains, I asked you this question, but you oh, asked I, me a question I asked back. you a question. I wanted you to answer it, but I'll answer it. Okay. Okay. I'll go do ahead. That. You answer it. <laughs> so capital gains is the tax that you pay when you buy and sell something for a short amount of time. Usually it's two years or less. Now, you probably don't know this, but you pay quite a bit of capital gains taxes inside of your stock accounts because most of the time you don't hold those stocks for a short amount of time. Most people hold stocks inside a fund and the fund manager buys and sells the stock, but you will still pay capital gain inside of that fund. You'll just pay your percentage of it, right? So as it pertains to real estate, if I buy a house and I keep it for less than two years because I'm flipping it, then I'm I'm going to pay capital gains, which tends to be a higher tax rate, right? Right. So what kind of a higher tax rate are we talking about? I mean, is it if you hold it for if you hold it for less than a year, that's the highest you can go, right? Right. Yeah. And capital gains usually hovers around 15%. There's been some talk in the Trump administration about getting rid of capital gains altogether. 
I have no idea how serious that is, but it's something that flippers have to really think about because, you know, it takes some discipline to save money for those taxes. Let's say you flipped a house in March mm -hmm. of the year, right? And you made $20,000. Well, you better put aside that capital gains tax or put it somewhere safe because when you have to pay tax at the end of that tax year, you are going to then be taxed on the 15% or more of that $20,000 gain, there's no getting out of it, right? Right, and so you have to do that and you have to keep a good accounting of all of this. And some people try to skirt this and that's where the IRS comes down hard on people who try to play this game where they try to say, oh, I lived in that property for a while or no, that was my second home. No, 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 you did never lived in the property. It was an investment property that you were gonna use as a flip from the, from the outset. You have to identify it as a second home. You have to identify it as a rental investment yes. on your taxes ahead of time, right? Right, absolutely. Very right. important to do. Right, okay. But what is the difference between that and cash flow? Something that you don't buy and sell to somebody else for a one-time profit. Cash flow we think of as streams of cash, not piles of cash, right? You didn't make one transaction, you're making monthly transactions. That's you, the renter, pays me, the owner, to live there. Right, and so that is taxed as ordin not as ordinary income. I'm sorry, that's taxed as passive income, which actually is taxed at a more favorable tax rate. So there you go. So, but then, and you can also offset that passive income with the property itself, right? Absolutely right. So now you own this property. You haven't flipped it. You're owning it, and of course, you're depreciating certain you know, aspects of the property. And this is where the old adage comes in: buy until you die, because you're being taxed on the income that you're receiving from that tenant in the property, and you wanna keep adding properties to your portfolio because you get to claim the depreciation. It offsets the income that you're getting from that tenant, and that's how the wealthy get wealthier, right? Right, so if I'm a flipper, right, and I flip a house to somebody else, that's taxed with capital gains. It's also shown up on my tax return as ordinary income. It is not passive income. Another big part of this and the way that the wealthy get wealthier is using a 1031 exchange for their investment properties. You buy a property, you've held it for eight years, and then you're gonna buy you know, a better property and you're gonna sell that property. Well, that's using, a t they use a 1031 exchange. Watch our videos, our interviews with uh, some experts on 1031 exchanges because they really go into detail about it. But as a flipper, you're typically holding it less than a year, you're flipping it quickly, and you cannot use a 1031 exchange. A 1031 exchange allows you to not have to pay any taxes on it, not pay capital right. gains taxes on upgrading your rental portfolio. So big multifamily investors that typically hold their properties for eight to 10 years, they'll use a 1031 exchange, sell their $20 million property off and use those proceeds tax-free to upgrade to another property. Right, so hopefully we're driving home the point here that taxes and cash flow are really, or rather sort of, I don't wanna say like tax, what's the word I'm looking for? Like tax you, you, avoidance, right? Like right. I'm trying to say that in a politically correct way because we're not really avoiding taxes, we're just trying to choose the most favorable way for us to be taxed. Right? Right. Pay less taxes, right? I mean, the right. whole goal is to do great business and pay less taxes. And those that are educated about the tax code pay less taxes. Absolutely right. So we're trying to show you the tax advantage of cash flow over capital gains, but also just, again, like the broccoli, right? It's good to sustain your life forever. The donuts are not. Right. And so what we're trying to point out to you here is that cash flow is a sustainable transaction, but capital gains refers to one transaction and then you just like see how much life you can get out of that pile of money. That's not a plan. Right. Right. Yeah, it's not a plan at all. So we hope that you found this helpful. Capital gains versus cash flow. I think the clear winner in this fight is ding, ding. cash flow. Cash flow is king always. And in this situation, specifically you get to see the benefits of it so subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so we really appreciate that and if you're ready to take action and learn what it would take for you to build financial freedom in your life download our free cheat sheet it's three pages you can click on it and download it. it's right there and it'll help you figure out how many rental properties it would take for you to achieve financial freedom so until next time go out there take action become a real estate investor not a flipper we'll see you next time everyone and eat your broccoli